you know, you, you, you talk about naysayers and those that criticize just for the sake of criticizing. Often when people are saying no and criticizing something that is working is good, they're just saying that I'm not ready, I'm not prepared, I'm not capable, and probably seeking help and, yes. and support. So we welcome those as well. Yes. For its acknowledgement, right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You know, let's talk about your circle of friends, inclu including the family. Is the discussion about purpose a common thing? Yeah, um, it's so interesting you ask that. Um, I have, if I, I have grown children, and then I have a couple of grown children, four grown children, and then we have two children that are still in the house. And of course, my oldest children, um, you know, unfortunately got me in my young days and I'm trying to figure myself out and trying to, you know, and I say, unfortunately, it didn't, I mean, I didn't totally mess them up or nothing like that, but they got me in that, you know, that time where I wasn't, I didn't really know what my purpose was. Um, and all, uh, and, and so there weren't really discussions around purpose. There were the traditional discussions of what you're going to do when you get older and all of that. But as I um, began to understand what purpose was, then we began to have, you know, some conversations about it. Um, the two children that are, that we have in the home now, we definitely have more conversation about purpose than we did with the older children. Um, can we have more conversations? Yeah, absolutely. I think we can um, get to a point where the conversations are every day. Like we may have a conversation um, maybe once a week or a couple times a week, um, but I think we can do better and have conversations daily um, about purpose. I, I agree with you. And I think that is some, it's lacking. And even with us adults, mm -hmm. as I'm discovering, you know, quite a few of my, friends and people that I know, associates, whatever you want to call it, they say this is the first time they're really given serious thought for their purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's 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 a conversation. It's a, our schools especially. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because our future is not necessarily us, right? It's the ones coming. Absolutely. All yeah. us, right? So I think there's there's room for improvement, and I'm glad you acknowledge that while you're doing it, there's still room for improvement there. Yeah, so that, that, that's good stuff. You know, what advice can you provide to individuals with no sense of their purpose? What advice can you provide? What do you have to share? Yeah, um, two things. One, go back to the one who made you. Go to your creator. And um, ask him, what were you purpose? What are you purpose to do? What were you designed to do? What are you created for? Um, and he'll answer. Wait for the answer. Um, oftentimes, and this is the second part of my answer, oftentimes we are looking for our purpose like outside of us, um, but it's within us. Uh, because when God, before he even fashioned us in our mother's womb, he had get, he he knew what we would be. Uh, created for and what he wanted us to do. And so we came here with it. It's not something that we can, you know, we come here and now we got a seat somewhere on the earth for it. No, we came with it. It's just our conditioning along the way, you know, we, it's suppressed. So that would be my advice. Go to the one who created you. And then to understand that it's within you. And have him and allow him to help you to rediscover. And I say rediscover on purpose <laughs> because I think when we're young, I think we understand, it. but because of conditioning over time, you know, it gets lost. So, uh, and, and you talk about getting lost. There's a level of curiosity that as you grow, you lose. Mm -hmm. All about curiosity, being curious and wanting to explore and understand. So that's that's a big thing right there. What we have, what we so we need to recapture that, whatever that is, right? Yes. We need to get back there. So you know, who check you? Who tell you when you're off the rail? 
<laughs> All right. So Holy Spirit for one. Number two, mom, always. <laughs> um, number three, um, husband and children. And children have a way of checking you for real. Like <laughs> you can't like teach them something, even a teaching or whatever, and then you do something a little differently. They will, they will check you. Um, and I've learned to allow that checking because sometimes, again, in our conditioning, you know, children, you just don't, ah, you know, be quiet, don't blah, blah, blah. You know, you don't, you can't tell me what to do or whatever. And it's not that my children are trying to tell me what to do or anything like that. But when they say something uh, that checks me, you know, I just be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, we, we learn from each other and, and, and children can teach us a lot. In fact, oh. There's a saying when one teach, we learn, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's a big deal right there. And that's so you learn from you learn from your surrounding and whoever yeah. it is around, right? Yeah. And we're all to be living in, in that learning environment at all time. And early early you said that there's no perfection. Always moving in that direction. Yes. Right. And that's what it's about, right? So when it's all said and done, you've done your work. How do you want to be remembered and for and related to the pursuit of your purpose? Yeah. Um, I just simply want to be remembered as a woman who served God. And as a result of serving God, she transformed many lives. So the God in her transformed many lives. That's it. A woman that served God and in the process transformed many lives. You know, we're coming close to the end of our conversation today. And what is that one or two takeaway that you would like to leave with our listeners? And I want you to especially focus on those individuals who are challenged, who have yet to take on this, this idea, this concept of, of purpose. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you live your happiest life, your best life, whatever you want to call it. You live your best life when you are walking in your purpose, period. Any, any If you're doing anything outside of it, you're always going to be um, feeling emptiness, um, unfulfilled, like you haven't realized your full potential. And so if you're feeling that way, um, it's really time for you to, you know, dig in and say, okay, what is my purpose? And let me begin, you know, how do I begin living it? Let me begin living it. Um, so that's, that's what I would say. And I would encourage everyone it's back to what I said earlier when everyone is walk, walking in their purpose, every need is met. Every need is met. And so anyone listening, it, you are needed to walk in your purpose because there are people that you're going to impact because you're walking in your purpose and vice versa. There are people that are going to impact you because, of, because they're walking in their purpose. So every need will be met. It's just not just about you. Not about you. That's right. And your purpose will serve others. Absolutely. Are there any closing remarks? Anything else you want to add? No, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to uh, to have this discussion. Uh, I, I'm I'm uh, just elated to see you know that uh, that you're doing uh, this uh, and uh, in this way and having this very deliberate conversation about purpose. Um, so that people can, you know, can, can uh, to find out what their purpose is and walk in it, or for those already walking in their purpose can be more encouraged to do so. And so honestly, I just want to thank you for this um, platform and for allowing me to be um, part of it this day. And I am, you know, my uh, prayer is that God will take this platform and um, that he will uh, expand its reach long 
further than you could have ever imagined. Um, Not only is it my prayer, but it is my belief that God is going to do that for you. So be encouraged. Don't get weary. Keep um, going um, because the impact that these talks are going to have, that this platform is going to have, will long surpass even when when you're here. This is part of your legacy. You know, uh, you said something early, and, and it surprised me as well, when you said, you're just a vest, right? So this is not, not even mine anymore, right? This is just the work, you know, we're called to do, and it just happened. And I will explain to you what happened once we, how it came about, uh, once we wrap up here, you know? So, you know, Pastor Lexi, I want to thank you for joining me today on the Ecoligion with Purpose Project, right? Your insights will undoubtedly add immense value to the conversation about purpose. I'll tell you this much, and I, from observing with you and having conversations with you and being part of a, of a group or groups that you're involved with, I know that your purpose will continue to just expand and grow as you're going to work, t- you know, you're going to work to continue to do your work. You know, to transform lives. So I'm going to extend an open invitation for you to come back anytime you see it, see it necessary to have to continue our conversation. So it's there for you. And I hope you accept. Oh, I do accept. Thank you. I'm humbled. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So folks, this brings us to the end of this edition of the A Collision with Purpose Project on the Spotlight. If you're like some individuals and would like to have a better understanding of your purpose, then please submit your short video speaking on the topic of purpose to a collision with purpose at gmail.com. If you would like to participate in an interview much like this one with Pastor Lex Johnson, then please submit your request to be interviewed to the a collision with purpose at gmail.com. Please note that your video submissions will be posted on our social media platforms. That is it for now. Blessings always.